Hey, what's up, boxers? This is Zach or Zach with BuildBox. In this video, I wanted to just kind of mess around with the software and show you how to do some quick game development. Now, we have a lot of presets with BuildBox, and you can go ahead and see some of them right here. This is the welcome window if you're not familiar with BuildBox, and you just go up here to the Create New button in the top left corner, and you select it, and there's this whole list of different presets that you can preview by just hovering your mouse over it. And so there's a bunch of examples that you can look at and a bunch of different gameplay styles that you can create. And these are all interchangeable. You don't necessarily have to follow this model. This is just a starting point. You can take one of these games and completely change it around. One example of this is the preset racing. This is a racing preset with a little race car that moves left and right. And let me just go ahead and show you what Danny did. He painted over this template and created a really cool racing template. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay, so this is the racing template that Danny created. And let's go ahead and take a look at what he did. Okay, awesome. So he's got a little white character, a little square character instead of the race car. And he's got little red balls moving down the screen and those are clearly the enemies. So if you hit one of those, boom, you'd, you're done. So let me just show you quickly how you can take this preset and move it around a little bit or adapt it a little bit so that you can get a different style game out of it. So right now, I'm gonna restart this and you can see that the controls are just slide left and right. And so your main options when you're playing this game is you have to touch on the screen the right side and the left side to move the character around. So clicking anywhere in this area will not uh, help you or do anything. And let me just show you how to quickly change that around. So I'm gonna exit out of the preview. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my world UI and I'm going to actually get rid of the little arrow to the right and the little arrow to the left. Now these buttons right now are set to move left and move right, and we're gonna go ahead and get rid of them. And what we'll do is we will add a joystick, and we'll go ahead and move this across the screen, and I'm gonna make it so that you can touch it anywhere in the screen and you can move the character around. And I'm going to make the control style be relative instead of absolute. So, so now I'm gonna go back to my menu editor, back to my mind map. So let me go ahead and go back into our world and I'm gonna check my character here and this is uh, still set to car, but I'm gonna check my character and you can see here that I am able to go left and right with a, a speed of four, up to 45, but it's preventing me from moving up or down because the max speed is set to zero. So now let's go ahead and press play and take a look at what we've got now. You can drag the character left and right and it's nice and it kind of gives you a little bit more freedom. One thing though is I noticed that the character moves around, it's a little bit too responsive. You might not think that that's a problem, but the sensitivity is up just a little bit too high for my liking, and that's easily changed. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of the preview, I'm gonna go back to my mind map, go back to my world UI, and I'm gonna change the sensitivity property on the, um, on the joystick to, let's say, 0.6 instead of one. Right now it's a little high. So I'll go ahead and preview and press play again and test it out. Okay, this is much better. It already feels way smoother. The other one was fine too, but it was a little bit too responsive for my taste. So this is really cool. Now, one thing that would be kind of fun is to just add a little bit of variety of characters and movement and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So I'm gonna exit out of the preview. I'm gonna go back to my world and I'm gonna add in a couple enemies. Now. Adding scenes to a game is super easy. Now these scenes are kind of like different levels. And so if I want to add more scenes, it's as easy as selecting a scene from down here and just pressing D to duplicate the scene. And pressing D on the keyboard stands for duplicate. And so you can create additional scenes or you can add a scene by pressing this little add button right here and that will also work. So this will give you a blank scene with all of your backgrounds and your character and everything like that, but it won't copy over any coins, objects, or enemies that you might have from your other scene. So this is if you wanna start a blank scene, you would just press this add button. So I'm gonna build out a scene and I'm gonna see if I can't make this game a little bit better. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up real quick. All 
All right, so let's take a look at what we got now. So I'll go ahead and hit play. Let's test this out. Okay, cool. Nice, okay, we've got little enemies flying everywhere now. Holy smokes. It's a much, much harder game at this point. But I think it's a good, um, ooh, a little portal added in there. I like it. So I think it's a good balance. I almost think that it's, might, might not have even made it hard enough. But this is the type of thing that you want to do, and I did this in no time at all. You can add portals in and enemies and add in a bunch of different enemy behavior so easily with BuildBox and add a whole variety of scenes and levels and worlds. So I hope you thought this video was useful. This is just a quick demonstration of how you can do some quick development. And if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, then please like this video and subscribe to our channel. All right, thanks everybody. Like and subscribe.